So I'm looking into the kingdom of Christ and whether it happened or not. And I'm leaning to the understanding that it already happened. But even so, if it already happened, how does it fit with history? Because we cannot throw away the baby with the bathwater. Some understand that the entire history is false and they just made up an entirely new history. But it is impossible. Yes, of course things has been changed but you can only change so much we still do excavations we still find things that show us the past right but if you think that everything is a lie that this is the point where people start to make up their own imaginations and this is very uh, dangerous because now you are going to change history yourself too so first of all it's very important to stay grounded in scripture right stay grounded in christ because no one can come to the father except by him so i want to go over some video clips and react to them because don't think that satan can't use these new knowledge too right don't think because some people put out a few ideas then it is the absolute truth because it's contrary than what you want to believe right we also always have to seek truth but also keep grounded in the word of god without coming up with imaginations that start to lead its own life because it will bring us nowhere it will be for another time but i will make a video what i believe about the mud flood right so many some people go even so far to say well it was such a global event that must have been the 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 flood from noah that has actually happened 200 years ago it goes too far right so i'm going to share my thoughts on that even though i see a lot of evidence in places that things happened right but it will be another video first i want you to understand why and who the devil is attacking right and if you go to my other videos about who is the true israel who are the sons of god i made a lot of videos about it i, comp I compiled them right one of them is called the true story of the israelites then you will understand the battle also the video from esau and jacob i made if you understand that you understand what the battle is about and when we look at history we see that some 200 years ago a certain people came back rose back up and who did they hate they hated the white europeans even though some people might not believe you but the white europeans are the most hated people in history especially the last 200 years we see it in the in the revolution in russia where they killed millions and millions of white christians right we see uh, if we see who is behind that that revolution also when we look who is behind the first world war who is behind the second world war who is behind the korean war the the vietnam war who, who's behind the iraqi war who is behind all that if you understand that you're already a step closer to the truth one of these white Christian haters was Karl Marx. And we all know what happened afterwards and how Marxism is still in the European American culture ingrained. And these people who brought this Marxism into our culture are the same people who now want to bring Islam massively into Europe. And another tactic they use is using the black man. Now, black people in America, there are a lot of black people who don't even want to identify as African-Americans, they just feel Americans. And many are successful. They are just the same as white people. They, they do the same things. They have jobs, they have families. There is basically no difference. And also, according to the law, everyone is equal, right? According to the American Constitution. One of the tactics the synagogue of Satan does is playing the victim role to get what they want and they put this mindset in a lot of black people in america to play the victim to constantly look at history and then not being happy with the situation and have the feeling they are less while the constitution says you are no less right so it's it's a mindset and one of these things marxism uses is the black man and putting them up against the white man, even trying to change history. 
What these Marxists are doing is bringing the critical race theory into the schools, telling people that the white children are basically evil. Therefore, the white children are being brought up that they are bad, and the black kids grow up hating them. So that they are conquering and dividing to the schooling system at a very young age already. Some may say, what has this got to do with the Millennium Kingdom? What has this got to do with the mud flood? What has this got to do with the reset? What has this got to do with anything? Well, if you just bear with me, I will show you how it all connects. So these communist Marxists, and if you watch my other videos, you will understand exactly who they are, but they use black people to go against the white man and erase the white man's history. Uh, to erase basically the white man. They don't tell you that, right? But this is fundamentally what they are trying to do using other peoples like Islam and the black man. So these Marxists, they fund schools if they teach critical race theory. They fund groups like Black Lives Matter. They fund uh, groups like the Black Panthers. They fund people like Nelson Mandela. They fund and train black people people for their own selfish reasons. They don't care about black people, but they use them for their goals. Many see the slogan Black Lives Matter or BLM as a noble plea for equal treatment under the law. It's a cry to secure the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for everyone. But what does the Black Lives Matter organization actually stand for? To find out, look no further than their leaders, Alicia Garza, Opal Tometi, and Patrice Cullors. Here's Cullors in a revealing 2015 interview. We actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. And people with, who are trained and have this Marxist mindset in them, those people also started the black Hebrew Israelites which are trying to say that the whole white man's history is a lie and everything is basically a black history. Look at the, the following clip. There can be no doubt that something horrible happened to the black community and they're still suffering from it, mm -hmm. especially in the Deep South when you look at these places where the people who lived are the direct descendants of slaves. Yeah. And then these are the same impoverished neighborhoods that no one's ever done anything to try to fix. Right. So how do you fix it? Uh, you first have to start with the subconscious mind and the black mind. Uh, and the problem with the uh, black mind is the fact that the black mind starts off with a defeatist mentality. From the day you're born, you're taught uh, the white man's out to get you. So you start off with a boogeyman and then um, you're taught that you're a slave. Right. Uh, so when your subconscious mind believes that the beginnings of your race is a slave, how do you aspire to be more than that? If he wants to overcome this, he has to accept where he comes from. He has to accept history. But he's basically saying that he's ashamed of his history. He's ashamed of Africa. He wants to change it. But you cannot make yourself feel better. And it doesn't help anyone if you try to change history. Right? Look at Candace Owens. She overcame She's more successful than I am. She's more successful than most white people I know. And there are a lot of black people who got out of this victim mentality and stepped out in the new. Right? But this victim mentality, that is just what the Marxists themselves always have done. You have to be reminded constantly about how they are mistreated in history, even through lying, through manipulating right so step out of it so in order to correct the black community you have to teach black history or so-called black history or what i would say african history in chronological order before we were slaves we were kings so how do you how do you have a whole entire nation of 40 some odd million black people and majority of them never heard of queen angola who never heard of the songhai empire the mali empire you know none of this stuff right king Mansa musa how do you how do you how do you raise a people's level of awareness about this stuff and, and how do you elevate them to want to do things in life when they think they are a slave? That's the first thing that you have to do to help black people. You have to teach them who they are. That expression 
before they were slaves, they were kings. The problem with that is a king is a monarch, and a monarch is one person who controls giant groups of people. You can't have a bunch of kings. There's not a lot of kings. You can't have a nation of kings. Correct. But that's very different from saying, you know, that we had four kings, right? Let's say there were just four, right? Mm -hmm. That's better than saying Harry Tubman, Fred Douglas, and these free slaves, right? right? You right. actually have to see at least one king. Yeah, maybe there were large tribes in Africa, right? And he had one leader. Uh, I don't know if they were called kings back then. But yeah, if that is true, well, be proud of that. But this guy doesn't leave it there. He takes it even a step further. I see what you're saying. You know, at least right. say... So see one advanced human being that also looks like you, that came from the same part of the world where yeah. your ancestors came from. So recognize that... The trajectory that you and your family are on is a direct result of being enslaved. That someone was enslaved in the past and brought over here against their will. Mm -hmm. That's why there's the negative mindset. That's why there's a negative self-image is because there's this great history of oppression. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you think you are a slave, you can't operate outside of that. And even if you don't think you're a slave, you think you're inferior. You know, right. I had, um, do you know who Miss Pat is? No. Hilarious comedian. One of the funniest human beings alive. And okay. she was here, and one of the things she was talking about was when she was younger, that when she would see white people, she wouldn't look them in the eye. She would yeah. get nervous. She felt inferior being around them. Mm -hmm. She just wanted to get away. She didn't feel like she belonged. Right. So this guy is so ashamed of his ancestry, which not necessarily needs to be, but in order to make him feel better about his history is to identify with other people's in history you know when you look at the second punic wars of carthage you had hannibal went through the alps which is a you know mission impossible and he went all the way to the to the doors of uh, rome and rome said yo we ain't coming outside to fight you bro we ain't coming that's how strong the power for the army was they said we don't want to fight they knew if they came outside those gates they would get their ass whooped so and this is what they do. They go to the old biblical region and identify as these people. But Hannibal came from Carthage, yes, but he was a white man because the whole biblical story is from the Middle East around the Mediterranean Sea and Europe. This is where the whole story played out, right? Alexander the Great was white, he went south into Egypt, right? The Romans later surrounded the whole Mediterranean Sea. But this guy believes, like others, that the entire continent of Africa was black, while the black people mostly never went north of the Sahara. Only south of Egypt there was one country called, uh, called Nubia. The Nubians, these were black people but still in that time the Egyptians were right it was only later when the Nubians went into Egypt in their army fighting became citizens that or even conquering Egypt maybe for a little while this is where black people came into Egypt but the original people in the Middle East and you can look up my video I made a video about the local flood in which I explain everything because we cannot look at how the world is now and then assuming it was the same way 2000 years ago and even now we see that north africa are arabs 95 percent arabs right but they only came into north africa after islam came this is why they started to conquer but before that, he's talking about Hannibal. Hannibal was a white man because Tunisia and all these countries now, they what, what was called Carthage then, were white peoples. You even see still now very white people with blue eyes living in North Africa. So how do you, how do you have a people that walk around not knowing that uh, Hannibal uh, Barker is a, a well-studied uh, war general today. The Pentagon still studies him, right? So how do you how are you operating in America as a black person and not know who Hannibal Barker is? 
Well, it's difficult, I think, for people that were born in America and all their known ancestors from America to even relate. Like, I'm my family is mostly from Italy and Sicily, and some of them from Ireland. Mm -hmm. I don't relate at all. I, right. I visit Italy in the summer so then, times. I don't relate at all. Right. So then the other the other side up is the fact that we were the natives. We were not brought here on slave ships. That's not economically sound. This what do you make mean? Sense. Uh, so when Christopher Columbus got here, wanted to, well, when Christopher Columbus got to the Caribbean, uh, according to primary source, right. they basically said the first thing he did was take slaves. He didn't bring slaves. He took slaves from the island. He captured people. So when you have colonization, you got to remember the United States was only built 13 colonies at first, right? You think this whole land was empty? No, there were natives here. Right. But today we're taught that natives is some other people. So first he tries to steal away the identity the Greeks, probably also the Israelites, and the Egyptians, and the people surrounding the Mediterranean Sea, and now he even tries to steal away the identity of the North American Indians. I'm sorry Indians, but according to this guy, you will never hear, but the true Native American Indians were actually black. No, natives are the melanated African being that has come here since the, 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 the beginning of the Mali Empire. We're talking about uh, 14th, 13th century. We had already come here from Africa. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had already come here. To the United States or to the, this the land mass, This landmass we call the United States. So the way the, the ocean current works is it, it works uh, from Africa, leaves out of uh, West Africa, comes to South America and the Caribbean. That's just how the currents go. You don't need no paddle boat or nothing. It'll just the currents will just take you there, and then you travel up. But we had already been here. All you got to do is look up the story of Sarah Rector. Sarah Rector is a, a wealthy so-called Native American. Uh, I think she was a Choctaw tribe or one of these tribes, but she was wealthy and uh, she wanted a VI pass to go somewhere. And um, they had her classified as a free person. Why don't we know about the wealthy so-called black people in America? Why don't we know that there were black slave owners in America? Why is that not taught? How Why is it not so? How, how many black slave owners were there? Man, this, the, the natives here had slaves. They were trading slaves with the so called white man. So now he's trying to say that the black man traded slaves to the white man in America, while it's very well documented that the black people in Africa sold those slaves to the people with ships. And not just Europeans, but black slaves from Africa were sold all over the world right then don't forget about the muslims how often they went into africa and sell slaves often these european ships didn't even need to go into africa because the black people themselves already rounded up black people to to the coast to sell them to the ships right but the majority of african americans that lived here were brought over here no 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 that's, that's not economically sound what do you mean by it's not economically sound like there were right, slave say, ships right all right let's say you wanted to have uh you wanted to sell marijuana right right would you uh import marijuana or would you grow it here if it's already here well it depends on whether or not marijuana grew here so how many people do you think were brought over from africa on slave ships because that definitely I, happened uh i don't believe it now the argument is were we brought here or were we already here did we bring ourselves here or did the white man bring us here? You see, when you say the white man brought us here, what you're doing is you're removing our ability to transport ourselves. You're saying, oh, we didn't know anything about boats. That's what you're trying to tell me. You're trying to tell me that we didn't know that there was a landmass here. The, uh, only the, the holy white man knew. I mean, when you go and you look at real European history, mm -hmm. right? you had the Magyars would believe that if they took a bath it was bad right they didn't even want to change their clothes they, they thought that dirty was purity when we talk about the moors going into spain and into europe the stories in the history our history says that when we met the so-called caucasian he was sleeping in the barn with the animals and we told him no you can't sleep in the barn with the animals 
We taught them etiquette. We taught them running water. We brought that technology to Europe. Now, if we brought the technology to Europe that saved Europe from the Black Plague, you mean to tell me that if we saved the white race, that we weren't already in America already? So the West Africans came into Europe to teach the Europeans how to bathe themselves and to give them running water. They probably even taught the Roman Empire how to make the aqueducts. This, uh, it's just nonsense. And what he's talking about is the Moor invasion of Spain. But were these Moors black? No, they were not. The Moors were of the Amidjad Caliphate. They were Muslims. They were Arabs. And in that time, Europeans didn't see much colored people. So everyone who came into Europe with a different color, they were called Moors. But these Moors were Muslims. It had nothing to do with Africans. So there was famine hit Rome. If your source of sustenance is from Africa, how are you superior? You're not. You get your food from me. So if you get your food from me, who's more likely to travel this globe? Me, I'm the source of food. And that's the first thing you need to survive on this planet. So if your whole civilization is depending on me to, pl to, pl to depending on me to supply food, I made it to America first. Well, it's just that you won the war. Wrong, you got to tell the story. This, right. But a lot of this stuff comes from my own common sense. It just does not make sense logistically to take people from all the way from over there to bring them here, especially when half your stock is going to die when you got people right here. You have human resources right here. All I got to do is pop them, shoot a couple of them. The rest of them are like, all right, fine. And you enslave them. And none of them die except for the ones I actually killed. Right. I got a whole millions of people right here. Like, why would I go all the, all the way across the ocean to bring people back across the ocean? It so if the superior race, like he calls it, the black man was already sailing the world uh, long before the white man and they were so advanced and everything. And there were millions of them in America before the white man came. Why was it so hard for them to not battle them and kick them back to Europe? But somehow the Europeans started little colonies and they were just overrun all these millions of people with this great civilization. But his story doesn't make any sense. Or the evidence in the Grand Canyon from Egypt. What? I yeah. didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, What's that? Is uh, You heard about that? Part of it, yeah. yeah what is there it? might be some gold down there. Ooh. Yeah, so, is this Egyptian oh. gold in the Grand Canyon? Hey, hey. Imagine if they found a fucking <laughs> Egyptian tomb in the there, Grand Canyon. There's Egyptian stuff that's been found in Ohio. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> All over well, I was looking some stuff up but the grandma was telling me I went home and looked up the Serpent Mound stuff and like right up the road from where the Serpent Mound is there's been a couple artifacts found there like Egyptian years ago. artifacts yeah. they call mounds pull, pull that up yeah. yeah there's mounds in America which yeah supposed to be like pyramids or whatever mm -hmm. so there's even an Egypt Ohio I don't think it's named after that but it's literally like in the same spot wow yeah I don't I, yeah, yeah so all across North America we find ancient sites with all Phoenician engravings and maybe also Egyptian things. But it doesn't prove that black people were here. I made a video about it. Uh, it's called Archaeological uh, Evidence of the Israelites. And we know already, and you can check it out. I, I explained it very detailed. But we know in the time of King Solomon, he already made boats and with the Phoenicians, they had trading routes into North America. And also probably because King Solomon was married to a daughter of the Pharaoh, he could make lines through Egypt to go into the Mediterranean, into North America. That's why they found, find all these Canaanite worship things, because the Phoenicians were Canaanites. Nothing to do with Western African civilization. So what has this all got to do with the Millennium Kingdom? Well, if you go to my video about the, the true Israelites, a metal compilation, then you see that the Israelites, when the northern kingdom of Israel was divorced and they went, we were taken away by the Assyrians after Babylon overtook the whole region, they took their chance and they went northwards. They ended up in Europe. Therefore, the Israelites are the European people. And Jesus said, I came for the last 
sheep and he knew where they were. The gospel went into Europe because the European people who were doing Canaanite stuff and pagan worship and all these things needed to be reconciled. And that's exactly what Jesus did. And this kingdom of Christ was established after they heard the gospel and they believed in Christ. Now, what we have to find out when exactly did it start? When exactly did Rome fell? Because we see there was a time where magnificent buildings were built. Look at Paris, look at Berlin, look at London, all these beautiful mega cities all with the same uh, um, with the same structures the, the same buildings right we even find these same buildings in america and australia right and across europe also russia but other countries you see a few of these buildings here and there but you're not gonna tell me that people from africa came into europe and that black people, that, that's probably the next thing they're going to say, that black Africans came to Europe and built these cities. No, the, the kingdom of Christ were Israelites. And what was the goal of the Israelites? That was to be a light to the world, to teach other peoples to take, take away their idols, their false gods and worship Jehovah, but we're not there yet because we see many countries in the world don't even believe in God or have their old pagan gods, right? We're now in the age of this of deception. Marxism came up, the spirit of the Antichrist, the anti-white Israelite peoples and nations need to go now, right? We have been brainwashed for decades now to accept Marxism. That's why you see, especially in Europe, that they accept this free Marxist idea. What kind of freedom does Marxism promote? It's the freedom from Jehovah, the freedom from God's law. It is anti-Christ. Satan is released. We're living in the age of deception. And the only thing the anti-Christ wants is to take away the identity of the true Israel. Jesus warned us about them. Watch out for them. They are of the synagogue of Satan. They have stolen away the identity and most of Christianity still worship them. And also from this synagogue of Satan came a man called Karl Marx, a white Christian hating man. And these Marxists now use black people to, for them to steal away the identity. Everything has to be a mess. No one may know who they truly are, right? And now they have uh, influenced black people to steal away the identity. Now we even see that they claim that Mozart was black and Beethoven was black and King James was black. Everything has to become black now, right? And all through the, through the decades, white people have no longer learned who they are. They've forgotten who they are. Well, Jesus already came for them. And that's why we are in the age of deception. The story is that in the time or after the time of Mozart, there was a black man in Europe and he was very talented at playing piano. And they nicknamed him the Black Mozart. So you need context, right? But many people just listen to a story but what tickles their ears and they accept it as truth. But always be careful because so many things are warped and twisted. So according to their narrative, these people came into Europe, conquered Europe, built all these beautiful cities. Well, this is a recent picture. If they were really so superior and advanced like they claim, how come that they still walk around like this? Most black people I talk to here in America and in Europe, they are just like the rest of us, right? They are free, they have all opportunity. Many of them have even more success than I have uh, in, a, in a business, for example. Right? They have bigger houses, nicer cars than I have. So what is the problem? Therefore, if we take away down the Millennium Kingdom, if we take away 
uh, what Jesus Christ did. Everything falls apart. It doesn't matter where you came from. You believe in Christ and you can have a relationship with the Father, right? No one can come to the Father except by me. That's what Jesus said. So the task is to bring all people to the worship of Jehovah. And isn't it beautiful that it doesn't matter what race you are, that you can worship Jehovah now. At the great white throne judgment, all men will be judged according to their deeds. It doesn't matter your history. It's what you do now, because you're going to be judged according to what you do now. But if you are insecure about the past, and therefore you try to make you feel yourself feel better by changing history or changing the whole thing up how are you ever gonna go ahead in life right don't look back at the history right history can be helpful if you have the true history but it is so warped in all places that the devil is very cunning it's a beguiler it will tickle your ears and it will take away from the true message right i believe the saints are already resurrected right and for all i know they are now with christ in heaven for all i know who knows right they're not here now maybe they are maybe they pose as mortals walking around us i don't know but i do know that the mortality comes after the great white throne judgment some will enter the city others will be left out right so um, don't try to change history. That's an anti-Christ Marxist thing that takes away the true history. And we're looking for the true history. What happened to these Europeans that started to believe? When exactly did this Millennium Kingdom start? Right? A thousand years later. When what exactly was the end of that thousand years? Right? It seems that it is only a few hundred years ago, right? And we see now all this confusion, all these new things. Because don't be deceived. This new information that came out, that can also be used by the enemy to morph everything else. I see a lot of mud flood videos and Tatarian videos of people who don't even believe in Christ. They try to uh, make it uh, into something else right they, they think some kind of Tatarian East Russian people uh, ruled the entire world that's, 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 that's not true so when exactly did the Millennium Kingdom start because you had also the more uh, Muslim invasion they say it was from 700 till 1400 so how does it exactly fit in there I'm looking at it and thinking about it but we cannot just discard the entire history think that Noah's flood was 200 years ago right we, we have to stay grounded in the truth right so i encourage you to watch my video about the the true israelites then you everything starts to make more sense but don't throw away the baby with the bath water things have been changed the timelines have been changed and all these things but there are many things that did happen right we just have to have a lot of discernment god bless you